All right, recording is ready to go. So again, welcome to the Boost Sale Direct Sale Phase webinar. Let's get started. So uh, again, I'm Ashley Thorine. I'm the team leader I'll be presenting tonight. Um, we have Devin Beck with us in our uh, chat feature questions log for you. Uh, Katie might be joining us here in a little bit. Devin is our product sales manager out of the Cincinnati area, and uh, Katie Maskey is a product sales manager up out of the Toledo area. Um, so you guys are all muted um, just so we can get through our presentation, but if you have questions, you can use that question feature, um, and Devin is going to be answering questions while I'm presenting, and then we have a couple of spots throughout the uh, evening where we stop and we kind of go through some of the questions that you all have asked, um, address them for the group to hear if we need to, and um, we will also uh, catch up with any questions that we haven't answered at that time. So anytime you get questions, go ahead and put those in the questions log and we'll get those answered for you. So here's our agenda. We're going to talk quickly about making the best of your booth sales for the rest of the season. We will talk about allocating cookies, which is where we get a lot of questions at, um, as well as how to finish out your cookie finances. Make sure you're submitting your final rewards and you know how to do that, and then we'll go over some cookie reminders, and then we leave the very end for open question and answer discussion time. So making the best of your booth sales. So we want to make sure that you guys know these four things. One, make sure you're checking eBuddy often. Um, Troops sign up for all of their booth sales at the beginning of the season in January, and then their schedules change or girls can't attend, and they release booth sales, or they're supposed to, um, if they know that they can't make them. So um, new ones open up all the time. So make sure you're checking in eBuddy often for available, available booth sales. Um, make sure you're taking your booth confirmation with you. You can print that from eBuddy. Um, it helps if uh, you bring that with you and another troop shows up at your booth sale at the same time. You guys can kind of compare notes and see who was scheduled when. Typically, one of three things happens. They were scheduled at that same location on a different day, and they're there on Saturday instead of Sunday, or they're scheduled at a different time slot at that location, and they got a little mixed up, or they're scheduled at the same uh, business, but it's down the road. For instance, in one of our towns, we have two Kroger's on the same road, one's on one side of town, one's on the other, and they get confused. So it's always really good to make sure you take your confirmation with you. The other thing is Operation Cookie. So this is our council-sponsored donation program where customers can buy cookies and we donate them to the men and women in the military. Girls who participate in Operation Cookie statistically for the last three years even um, have sold 50 packages more per girl than the average girl who doesn't participate in Operation Cookie. So it's a great upsell for the girls, um, helps them get to their goals faster as well as your troop goals. Make sure you're following the guidelines that are on the um, cook, in the cookie book on page 16. Um, we've had some complaints this year um, of some um, conduct misbehavior at booth sales. So it's always really important that if you have a large troop and sometimes you guys are doing multiple booth sales over the weekend and you have different parents handling these with you, it's great to have that parent support. But we want to make sure that the girls and the caregivers who are there understand the guidelines. So feel free to make copies, make sure that you show them the cookie book so that everybody's on the same page. Okay, um, seven ways to find success at booth sales. So we got this picture, I got this picture in my email this week. This is Troop 34134 um, at a VFW hall, um, and they have a specific booth sale. I mean, they have cookies for sale, but they're really promoting Operation Cookie. I love their sign. It says, if you can't eat them, treat them. Donate cookies for our troops. Um, so I thought that was a really cute booth sale. I wanted to share that. Um, but there is a blog post here. Let me get out of presentation mode, bear with me, that I wanted to make sure that you guys uh, saw, and I'm going to put that in the uh, chat box for you. You can click that link and visit our GSWO blog. Um, it's seven ways to find success at booth sales. It's a really short read. It'll take you a couple minutes, so you can always come back to that and check it out later. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I shared that link with you all so you have some other tips and tricks for your booth sales for the rest of the season. Okay, so next we're going to get into allocating cookies. We'll talk about why it's important and how to do it, including a tutorial where I'll jump over into eBuddy too. So um, it's important to allocate cookies because girls are going to get credit for all the packages sold. So when you place the initial order, um, you put in the order by girl. But then if they sell booth sales or they come back to you and ask for more cookies, you either take those from your extras that you had for booth sales or you go to the cupboard and get more. Those cookies aren't actually allocated to that girl and eBuddy. They're just kind of floating as troop cookies. So it's your job as the troop cookie manager to go back in and make sure that those packages get allocated. So there's instructions 
instructions in your cookie book on page 20 and 21, and I just picked up my book to make sure that that's correct. Yes, page 20 and 21 um, on how to allocate cookies, so you can always reference that. Um, you can put notes in every time you do an allocation, like additional pickup on 314, um, boost sale at Kroger 314, um, and then we're going to kind of cover like the columns in eBuddy to make sure that you're putting them uh, in the correct space. So if you'll bear with me, we'll jump over to eBuddy and I will show you how that is done. Okay, my eBuddy is going to look a lot different than yours just because I see everything for the entire council. So we're going to jump to my Juliet troop here. Okay, so when you get in, you're going to go to Girl Orders, tab across the top here, and you'll see all over your girls, and you'll see where they're at so far. So these totals down here, let me highlight those, that is just adding up all of these columns. Okay, so that means that I've allocated 950 packages so far to these girls. And then this next line here, Troop Order, Actual Packages and Operation Cookie, is 965. So I have 15 packages floating in my troop or my troop cookies that um, I can allocate out. So we are going to give Abby here, we can just click her name and it will open up. Um, and she did not have an initial order, but if she did, it would have been listed here and it's grayed out. So we're going to add a transaction in for Abby so we can give her credit. So we click the purple add a transaction button right here. And then this little uh, screen pops up down at the bottom. So here you can put notes. So I'm going to say she had an additional pickup and today's date. And then I use the tab button on my keyboard, which is really handy. And it just tabs through all of these um, columns. So this one here is Operation Ooh. Sorry, this one here is Operation Cookie. All those packages are $4. Um, this column here is Cookie Booth. So if the girls sold cookies at a cookie booth, you need to allocate them here or Special Booth here. So you can see that this has a $4 mark here and this has a $5 mark here. So if your troop had any toffee or s'mores cookies at your booth sales, you would make sure that you allocate those cookies here and Cookie Booth cookies here. So when there's a number here, in these booth columns, that will automatically tell us that she participated in a booth sale, and that is how the booth sale patch gets ordered. Those cookies have to be in one of those two columns. Now, you notice I don't put four Thin Mints, two doses, five tags. It's just by the total volume. So if you want to keep track of your individual inventory, that's totally up to you. But when you're allocating, you just need the number of packages sold. So we'll say she did six cookies at booth sales. She did two of the specialty flavors and four of the regulars. Um, but this transaction, we already said, was for um, an additional pickup. So she came to me today and got 15 Thin Mints. So it would go under the cookie other. So 15 Thin Mints. I can tab over and click OK. Now, some people get confused and they think everything's saved, they log off and that's it. Well, you have to hit this other purple save button right here. Transaction has been saved. Now, let's say mom called me back two minutes later and said, oh, I need to run back in. I need two s'mores also if you have them. I go, yeah, sure, that's no problem. So I just click on this transaction and I can go over here and add the two s'mores that she picked up and click Save. So anytime that you add transactions in, you can edit them. The initial order is locked though. Now let's say we did a booth sale and I want to allocate cookies to hers. So we had a booth sale at Kroger on 311 um, and she sold 14 packages of regular cookies at the booth and two specialty cookies. Now these cookies are already paid for because we collected the money at the booth sale. Now, if you're like me and you don't want to do the math, I click OK and it tells me the 14 regular packages and the two specialty packages is worth $66. I'll open this back up and say $66 was paid because her parents don't owe for that and I use eBuddy to keep track of how much money is due. Um, so these are booth cookies and they were already paid for because we collected the money there. And then I hit save. So I also use eBuddy to track payments. So I can see here that she did $66 in a boost sale, that's done, but she took $70 worth of cookies from me. So she still has a balance down here of $70. So she comes in and she makes a payment. So you click, oh, sorry. 
add payment. Oh, it won't let me do it. Okay. Uh, extra. Okay, bear with me. Oh, okay. Well, let's just say she had an extra at a booth sale. Okay, add a payment. So she is making a payment on 314 and she paid me the total balance due, which is now $75. Even though I put that under booth column, I'll fix that. And it will show I can record a payment here and make it $75 and her balance is zero. Or you can do it under the transaction tab too. I always just do add a transaction. Payment was made on 314. Well, 34, that'll work of $75 and you can click OK. So if you don't want to use the add payment feature, you can do the, the other one as well. It's so whatever works for you. Okay. Um, let's see. Do we have any questions right now? Um, oh, Amanda had a really good question. She said, do I need to write a receipt for booth sale cookies like how we give receipts to caregivers? So you don't have to write a receipt out for the customer um, and you don't have to write a receipt um, for the cookies that are sold at booth sales, that's up to you. If you want to have a paper trail of what you did, that's fine. Um, some cookie managers have like their own spreadsheet that they use to say, okay, this is what I started with an in inventory at booth sale. This is what we got done with. There were four girls selling. I'm going to allocate, you know, 10 packages to each girl. Um, but you don't actually have to write out a receipt when you're allocating cookies to the girl. I hope that answers your question, Amanda. If it doesn't, just let us know. Um, isn't there another way, okay, Jessica says, isn't there another way to allocate booth sales? I click on my booth and selected what girls were there. So Jessica, I think you're talking about the uh, booth sale app from uh, Little Brownie, um, which is, you can download on your smartphone. Um, Jessica, let me know if I'm correct or not. You should be able to do that on your mobile device. But it's pretty handy. It's a smaller version of eBuddy, um, and it just kind of opens up to the booth sales that you have, and you can click on the booth sale that you were at, and all of your girls show up, and you put in yeah, how many packages that you sold at the booth sale and how many girls were there and it automatically allocates for you. It's pretty nice. Jessica, let me know if that's what you're talking about. Um, oh, audio is restored. Sorry, couldn't hear me. So sorry, guys, you couldn't hear me. Okay. Um, uh, I think what Jessica is talking about is the uh, booth sale app that you can get from Little Brownie. It's, um, I believe, on Android and Apple devices, and you can download it, and it's a very, it's like a condensed version of eBuddy, and you click on it, um, and it opens up your eBuddy, I do believe you have to log in, and it'll show you all the booth sales that your troop has. So then you click on the booth sale that you were just at, and you put in how many packages total you sold, and then it'll show you all your girls that are registered, and you click which ones attended your booth sale, and it will automatically allocate them for you. Jessica, let me know if that's what you were referencing, The I think it was the booth sale app but is a very handy feature. A lot of our uh, volunteers who are tech ha or tech savvy use that one. And she found it online. Awesome. Jessica, would you mind sending us the link of where you found that online so I can make sure I keep that in my resources? All right. Okay, I'm leaving yeah. without edits just because I'm going to have to go back in and fix those anyways because that was live eBuddy. So... Uh, from current slide. Okay, so we showed you how allocations are done. Um, do we have any other questions coming in? Devin, were you able to get your audio up and running yet? I know you were having some trouble with your headset. Uh, if you can I think hear me, I got a little got, bit of audio trouble work. tonight. Um, but either way, we I think we've got all of the questions answered. Keep those coming as you get them, and we will pause for those, but I'll continue on for now. So we're going to talk about how to finish out your cookie sale and the finances. So we'll talk about some basics, go over the sales report that uh, comes up in eBuddy, and then the final report envelope, as well as what to do if you have any caregivers that still owe you a balance or if you have parents that owe a debt. So here's your basics. Make sure that you're collecting all of your balance. So make sure, if you haven't done so already, to set up a date to collect all of the rest of the money from your girls. So the initial order should have already been handed out to the customers, and that money should have already come back into you. If not, make sure you schedule something very soon to get all those funds. Uh, make sure that the parents are all notified. So at the beginning, uh, if you've joined our uh, other webinars, we always say to communicate often and to set clear expectations with the parents. And 
that one of those is being how you're going to communicate with them. So whether you set up a Facebook page or your uh, phone call uh, tree for your troop or um, everybody's on text and you send them a group text or an email or you have a meeting every week and that's where you give all the information at. Just make sure that they know where that date and location is in time to bring the money to you. And secondly, and probably the most important thing on here is to make sure you always use your receipts. Jessica or Amanda had asked a question earlier about um, using uh, the receipt books. So those are for any time you exchange cookies or money with your girls and parents. There should always be a date troop number, you sign on one line and they sign on the other. And that shows that you both agreed on what transaction took place, whether it was how many cookies they picked up, the balance due, or how, many, uh, how much money came in. And then you're going to make sure you're going to use the deposit tickets that you were given at delivery. So we have two council preferred banks, PNC and Fifth Third. Um, Primarily the Lima area or the Lima region, uh, the north of central, um, uses uh, Fifth Third because they don't have PNCs there. So you would have received your deposit tickets at the very latest at delivery um, when you picked up your initial order. And those are what you should be using to pay money into the council account. Um, we have the PNC tickets have, I think, a six or seven digit number on the top right of them. And those are specifically assigned to your troop. Um, that's how we track uh, that you've paid the money that you owe to the council into the council account. Now mind you, we have, oh, roughly 2,300 troops selling. So if everybody makes six deposits, that's a lot of deposits to track. And the only thing we can track it with is that six or seven digit number, which is comes to our next point is why we always tell you to get two receipts when you make a deposit um, into the council account and your troop account, because eventually you're going to give one to us in your final report envelope. And we want you to keep one for your troop finances too. Every once in a while, the bank does not capture that fancy little number on those deposit tickets. And then we have what we call a floating deposit. So we have money that has come into our council account and we don't know which troop it belongs to or which troop made that deposit, which is why we ask you to turn in your receipts at the end of the sale so we can balance out. So it's really important that you keep those receipts. If for some reason the bank didn't capture that, that special ticket number, we will have no way to prove that that deposit was made by your troop. So make sure you get two receipts. Um, okay, I'm going to pause just for a second because we had a really good question about allocations. Um, uh, let's see, Patricia asks, when you allocate cookies, as long as the amount equals the amount of either the four or the five dollar cookies, are we okay? So I assume that you're talking about, uh, Patricia and eBuddy, as long as um, you allocate um, the number of packages in... Um, in eBuddy under the correct column, it will calculate the four and five dollars for you. But if you allocate, if you sell s'mores and you allocate them under the regular cookie column, it's not going to add up the money correctly. So if you're using that for the money feature, you need to make sure that you're allocating correctly. Um, oh, really good question. If you guys have looked at your deposit receipts, Shannon asks, um, what do we do with the three carbon copies? Because the bank automatically prints them and there's three or four layers to them. Um, you can keep a hold of those um, because we don't we don't have we don't collect those we need the bank validated receipt so like at PNC it's like an actual receipt that prints up and they tear it off and hand it to you um, and then uh, fifth third I think they actually do um, like a little slip of paper that they run through their machine and it'll be validated by the bank that you made the deposit so if you want to keep on keep hold of your carbon copies you're welcome to um, and Amanda asked the same question, what are the four different colored deposit slips? So those are the ones that the banks print for us. It's just carbon copy. They, I think they only collect one um, and they give the others back to you so you can keep those for your own troop records. Okay, really good questions, guys. All right, so sales report in eBuddy. So if you go into eBuddy, there's a report uh, under the final reports tab. It shows you um, the deposits that you've made, cookie totals, and your per girl average. Um, so we want to make sure that you know that you should not be completing all of your final payments to the council until you've allocated your cookies to your girls. And you'll see this nice little blurb in the cookie book several times that says stop. Did you allocate all of your girls' cookies that they've sold yet? We want you to make sure that you do that first because your proceeds are based on your per girl average. And the per girl average is based on the number of girls selling. So um, eBuddy considers a girl to be selling once she has at least one package of cookies to her name. So if you had a big troop and only half of them participated on the initial order, 
but then everybody did boost sales with you, your, your program average is going to change as you continue to allocate cookies. So it's really important to make sure all of your allocations are completed before you do your rewards and your final payments. So I'm going to jump over to eBuddy and show you what that final report tab looks like. Okay, so this one up here, it says sales report. That is your final report tab. Okay, so it'll come up with your information here. So you can see that I have nine girls selling in this troop and there are 14 girls registered. Okay, the other important thing down here is PGA selling. So my per girl average is 107 packages. You'll take that information and plug it into the chart in your cookie book on page, let me reference that, page seven. Um, so my troop is at that first tier proceeds rate, so we are, we are making 55 cents per package. Um, people get really confused by all of this info right here. Um, they see that the proceeds rate is 55 cents and they think that that means that they're only making 55 cents a box. It's based on your per average selling. This just shows up because these are part of our settings in eBuddy. So the important stuff is down here. So packages received, you can see my initial order shows up. My girls did digital cookie, so these are digital cookie transactions for packages that were shipped or donated. And then you can see that I've picked up quite a few packages here. Okay. And then my total packages received is here. You can tell my girls did 114 packages for shipping through Digital Cookie and 16 for charity. And then over here is all the deposits that are made. So these, the DOC, digital order card, uh, or digital cookie, is showing that the deposit was made, basically the customer put in their credit card information, it filtered through, and it paid to the council account. So this was donation, girl delivery, ship, you can see the different indicators here. So we've had quite a few of those payments come through. Then you can see that there should be a deposit here. Um, let me jump to a different troop. So I can show you what it looks like when you make a council deposit. Okay. So here is one of their deposits. It was $200. Oh, I really should have looked that one up a little bit better. Devin, do you have another troop number to look at really quick? People who you know have made a deposit. I bet we have here. I want to show you what it looks like when there's a council deposit that's made here. It's going to have their reference number. So that's that number that the bank pulls for us. And you can see that they made a deposit on the 28th, the 2nd, and the 6th. And these are their dollar amounts. So eBuddy is great, but it is not connected to our bank software. So when you make a deposit, we have to wait for that information to come to us from the bank. We connect this number with your troop and we upload this information. So it's not going to automatically show. If you go to the bank today, it's definitely not going to show tomorrow. Um, we say it takes about two weeks for our finance department to get through all the deposits. Again, if we have 2,500 troops selling, everybody's making six deposits. It takes a little bit. But these will eventually show up here. Um, and again, if they don't, that's why we tell you to turn in your receipts so we can balance on our end if one of your deposits didn't show up. So down here, you can see the total troop sales. This is a very large troop, and they uh, this troop specifically I know is working to go to a Europe trip. So they are big cookie sellers. So total sales, all the packages that they sold are 20000 Their troop is making $3,762.75. Um, so they've made this deposit so far, and this is what the total is owed to council. So that takes the council proceeds minus what they've made. They're going to need to continue if all their allocations are done and deposit in another 11,943. So eBuddy does all the math for you as long as you've put all the information in correctly. So if you want to show this and print it, which we do suggest that you do, print page, it'll print this as one sheet and you can stick it inside your final report envelope. All right, so we'll go back here. 
Okay, so money counts. This is the, the best way that I always explain how to handle all of your finances. Bring, have your meeting where all of your parents bring their money in, count and verify what they're giving you, make sure you write the receipt. Once everybody leaves, then you have all these little money envelopes with funds from these girls. I sort the checks into one pile and the cash into another. So all checks go into the council account. That way, if they bounce, you don't have to worry about it. We handle that on our end. You won't even know that account uh, check bounces unless you're the one that wrote it. Then we'll be contacting you. Um, but so all the checks always go into the council account, and then you can put the cash into your troop account. And then you have your receipts to show how much you've already deposited into the council account. And then you can see in eBuddy how much you owe total. So you've got two options to finish out the sale. So you can either write a check from your troop account for the balance that's due and deposit it into the council account. Or if you have cash, you can put that into the council account. I've had several people ask me if we if we can only put checks into the council account. No, it's, it's just like any other bank account. You can put cash in there too. We just want to make sure that you put all of your checks in the council account so that you are not responsible for any bounce checks you're going to lose the girls money it's it's not fun and we don't want that to happen so we put that fail safe in there for you and remember not to overpay council please because it takes a lot of work on our back end um, and it can take up to 10 weeks to process your refund for your troop uh, a direct deposit form is required um, that makes sure that we can confirm your troop account and you have to include that in your final report envelope so we really don't want you to have to wait 10 weeks but we have to reconcile every single troop for the council um, there we go. We have to reference every single uh, or reconcile the entire sale for the council before we can start issuing refunds. So we really want you to make sure that you're not overpaying the council. If you do, um, there, uh, there are four handouts attached for our webinar today. Um, one includes the cookie final report envelope. Um, if you lose yours, you can always print it, that out and stick it on an envelope. Um, there is the deposit uh, direct deposit worksheet. Um, for refunds. It's also available at our website at uh, www.gswo.org slash cookie resources, which I'm typing into the chat for you all now. Okay, so your final report envelope. Um, this was included in your uh, cookie sales materials. It is due by March 31st or whatever the deadline is that your service unit cookie coordinator gave you. Some of them back that deadline up a little bit so they have time to go through their paperwork or because of their uh, work schedule they have to collect them a little early or depending on your um, your area you could have spring break so some of them want to get that information in before everybody leaves for spring break so make sure you abide by their deadline again that envelope was in your cookie material packet if you lost it no worries you can print uh, the a hard copy of the the um, what the front of the envelope is and you can stick that in a regular envelope with your other materials um, you need to include your final report from eBuddy. We find a lot of errors where people didn't quite listen and they didn't allocate all their cookies first. They made their payments, then they allocated cookies, and it changed their per girl average. So we really like to see a, a hard copy of what your sales report looked like when you filled out your finance information. Make sure you fill out everything on the envelope. It's really easy. It's just your troop cookie manager, your name, your phone number, your troop number, and then it's got a handy dandy little checklist of everything that needs to be completed or included in the envelope. Um, and make sure that if you did any troop to troop transfers um, or cookies with another troop, so if your troop had extra mints and I needed them and you gave them to me, you did a troop to troop transfer and you should have a receipt for that. We like to have those hard copies in, um, in house so that we can reference in case there's a discrepancy anywhere. So the big question that we always get is what happens if a parent or a caregiver does not pay their balance? So um, if you've been with us through the, all of these webinars, you know that I preach on uh, receipts and paperwork, and there's a reason for that, and that's because there has to be a paper trail for every transaction. So if in the event that there is a, a debt owed by a parent or a caregiver, we have a way to help you. So there's a, a form called a debt collection assistance form. It's sounds really fancy, super easy to fill out. Again, it's available at our website and I included it as a handout on our uh, webinar. 
it's who you are, your troop number, who the parent is, who the girl is, what the balance is, and then the proof that goes with it. And that's where that paperwork is very important. So we have to have a copy of the signed caregiver agreement form, which shows the girl's name, the parent's name, the signature, the date, everything. And then we have to have receipts showing proof of product pickup. So we have to, one, make sure that they had permission to sell, and two, proof that they actually picked up the product. So that's where those receipts come in super handy for you to give to us or a copy to us that has the parent signature, the date, the troop number, and your signature to show that they actually did pick up that product. So what you'll do is just complete that form and attach the documentation and then you'll stick it in the, your final report envelope. Part of that final report envelope is a balance that shows um, uh, what you owe to counsel and what was deposited. So um, we're, we don't want you to pay for a debt from a parent out of a troop balance. You guys should always keep what you've earned from uh, the sale for your troop proceeds. So what you'll do is subtract that balance out of what you owe to the counsel. So let's say I'm a troop and I owe counsel $1,000, but I have a parent that still hasn't paid $250. All I'm going to do is subtract that $250 and only pay the counsel $750 which is also really important why you should collect all of your money from your parents ahead of time before you finish out your finances for the sale because if I just assumed all my parents were going to pay me and I went ahead and paid counsel the thousand dollars and then I had a parent that didn't pay me 250 uh, my troop would be due a refund for 250 again so that's why we always tell you push those dates back a little bit make sure that you uh, are collecting all your money and giving yourself uh, collecting the money from your parents um, and giving yourself enough time to go through all of your records and make your deposits. Um, let's see. And we've got some questions and Devin's on the chat there getting those answered. Um, <laughs> Um, someone asked if they're getting low on receipts. Can you get more? Absolutely. Your service unit cookie coordinator should have extra receipt books. If not, you can stop into any of the regional service centers. If you need more deposit tickets, please uh, give customer care a call um, or shoot them an email with your troop number and the information that we need. You can either pick them up at the regional service center or we can mail you a set. Um, really important that if you don't have any or you think you need more to let us know right now because if we have to mail them, it's going to take a little bit for them to get to you. Okay, keep going. I think we're at our questions time. Yes, we are. Oh, let's see. Someone had said, I haven't heard from my cookie coordinator about a final report envelope due date. Uh, should I check or should I just assume March 31st? Um, so they're absolutely due no later than March 31st, but it always wouldn't hurt to give them a call and say, hey, I haven't heard from you. You need these by the 31st, correct? And that way you can just verify that information. All right, let's see here. Oh, hi, Christine. Christine is a cookie coordinator. She had a really good question. She said, is there a way for me as the cookie coordinator to know how many deposit receipts should be submitted for each troop or if there's other troop to troop transfers? So yes, Christine, you can. As a cookie coordinator, you can see that final report tab um, in eBuddy for every single troop. And there is a report that uh, will send you the details on how to pull and you can see all of the balances. But uh, uh, if you're checking envelopes, you can do that while you have eBuddy up, and you can verify that all of those receipts and everything are included. Mm, it says we've lost sound. Don't th I'm not on mute, and it shows that everything audio is okay on my end. All right, so we'll keep going here. Um, submitting final rewards. So we're going to talk about the deadline, going to give you a how-to and some reminders on some of our awesome rewards. So um, uh, make sure your rewards are entered for your entire troop for the entire sale by March 31st. You can see that's kind of the culmination of the sale. Um, again, make sure all of your allocations are done first because rewards are based on every single package that the girl has sold. eBuddy's awesome, but it's only as smart as you tell it or as smart as you uh, make it. So you have to tell eBuddy how many packages the girl sold. 
Um, if a girl has earned a level with a choice, which starts at 160 packages, make sure that you get those selections from uh, the girl or caregivers. And don't forget their t-shirt size if it applies. So on the back of the permission slip that you had the parent sign at the beginning of the sale was a list of all the rewards. I always tell folks, if the girls don't know what they want yet, that's fine, but make sure they select a t-shirt size. So if you're sitting down at the computer, everybody's in bed, you finally have a free moment, it's 11 o'clock at night, and you're going to do your rewards, it's really helpful to have their t-shirt size in hand right then so you don't have to make any phone calls that late in the evening and you don't have to follow up the next day. So um, if you don't have t-shirt sizes for your girls, make sure you get those now. Um, and a really cool feature in eBuddy is that you can uh, make your size or you make your selections for the girls in groups. So they do it, uh, I think it's in groups of 10. So you can go in and make all of your selections for 10 girls at a time instead of having to do them individually. It's kind of nice. So we're going to jump over to eBuddy real quick and I will show you how that is done. I want to make sure I'm not going to make reward selections for a different troop. So you'll go to the rewards tab. And you'll hit final rewards order and we're going to hit fill out that purple button in the middle. Then it's going to show all of my girls and then how many rewards they've got. And the cool thing is, is if they have a selection that they need, it'll come up in red size selection needed. So you can see it already tabulates everything, but I've got some selections to make. So I can do the uh, edit all feature edit all below, which will do me this group of 10 girls here, or edit all below will do the rest of those four there. So there's no selections that need done here. It's just this chunk up here. So I'm going to click the edit all below button. And it's telling me the girl, her um, box is sold. So we're going to scroll down to where I need to make a selection. Uh, there we go. Reward selection here. So I know that she wants the wise out pillow. Um, there was another selection somewhere to make. Oh, she's loading there. Okay, so for the sake of time, we will submit all girl orders. If it will let me, it probably won't because that one order is so big, it's kind of slowing down. Okay, rewards submitted for nine girls. So it says you've made changes to the girl orders. Don't forget to resubmit your troop order if necessary. So uh, I made an, uh, an edit there, but I still need a size selection. I'm sorry, this is done. It's in green now. This one's in red because I need to make that one happen there. Okay. So you can see my total rewards. Um, these rewards down here are based on the per girl average. Um, and then the DOC emails, you will not select this. This is information that we will actually upload into um, eBuddy at the end of the sale. So this will probably show zero for every girl, even if you know you have some that did. And then this is based on the number of packages sold. Uh, if they sold 36 packages for digital cookie, they earn a pad folio. That information is already here. Um, but we will definitely update this one. And the other thing that automatically updates is the boost sale patch. So we have one girl that had boost sale packages listed to her name, so she's going to get a patch there. And then the Operation Cookie Rewards also uh, uh, calculate for us, but um, you have to choose whether you're going to attend the event. Same thing with the concert if you've earned it. Okay, so when I'm done, I would hit Submit Reward Order. Once I've submitted, I can't make changes, but look, oh, on level 160, the catalog, wise out pillow, or the cookie dough needs to be made. So it won't let me submit all the way until I've made that last selection. All right, so that was a quick look at uh, the rewards. And then once I'm done, this fill out button will be gone. I can view them all, or I can do the girl report, and it'll put it into an Excel spreadsheet for me. It's kind of handy. Okay, let's get back here. So final reward reminders, I just wanted to kind of cover real quick our troop bonus rewards. These are earned as a group for your troop based on your per girl average. So if you guys hit 190, um, every girl selling gets the custom I love 
owl sunglasses, including a set for the, the Troop Cookie Manager. And then our favorite reward, which tends to be the most popular, is the concert. Uh, it's usually announced as the mystery concert, but we already know our artists. It's Maddie and Tay. Um, so that's at 2.30 per girl average. So we got one ticket for every girl selling, and then enough for uh, adults needed for the uh, girl-adult ratio. The other big question that we get um, is uh, how, you know, can, can we buy extra tickets for parents that, that want to go? So uh, right now we won't really know until the end of the sale if we have extra tickets. So if you want to guarantee that you'll have one, I suggest watching Ticketmaster and seeing when the concert tickets go on sale and you can always purchase them from there. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hopefully I got that muted in time. Nothing like sneezing. Um, oh, uh, Kim has a great question. She said, uh, my heart, uh, the I heart uh, owl sunglasses says none for cookie manager. Will that update? So um, those won't actually calculate an eBuddy, but we order them for you. So if you had seven girls and you hit that per girl average of 190, when you get your rewards, you would actually get eight. So you'll have one for every girl plus one for you. Okay, so uh, the last one is the Troop Cookie Dough. So for our big sellers, um, I think we've lost audio connection. All right, connected again. Sorry, I don't know where that uh, network connection came from. Sorry about that. Hopefully you can hear me. Sorry. Thank you for letting me know, Patricia and Emily. Um, so our troop bonus rewards uh, at the 350 level is troop cookie dough. So again, um, per girl average is only based on the number of girls selling. Can you guys hear me now? All right, looks like we had a connection error. Yes, okay, great. So the Troop Cookie Dough is for um, uh, the 350 PGA, and it's based on your per girl average. Again, per girl average is the number of girls selling, not the number of girls registered. Um, so it's the total packages sold divided by the number of girls selling gives us your PGA. So if you guys hit that 350 level, we will give you Troop Cookie Dough that you guys can use. Um, so um, just based on the number of girls selling per that chart. Um, I will jump into this question real quick. Christine asks, when is the final date for placing girl delivery orders in digital cookie? That date is today. So um, after midnight, that option is no longer available. So if you have customers who are waiting to place a digital cookie order and they wanted the girl to deliver, they have to get those in today. Um, we, we cut that off two weeks early before the sale just because the parents have to have time to accept the order, get the cookies from the cookie manager, and get them back out to the customer and, um, and make sure that they get their cookies. All right, other reward minders. So we have a sweet success event for any girl that sells 650 packages or more. We have two events, one in the north and one in the south. So we do these at our camp properties. Um, usually we do some really cool um, outdoor camp activities in the morning, and then we do lunch, and then we have a, kind of a celebration event. So there's one being held at Whippoorwill in the south on June 24th, and then one in the um, north at Camp Libby on July 22nd. The girls are free to choose which one they want to go to, but we do have to know that when you place your final rewards for your troop. Um, and, uh, oh, uh, looks like um, we miss a lot. I want to double check. Did you guys see the information? I know we talked about the Owl Love Sunglasses and the Maddie and Tay concert. Then there was the troop bonus rewards. I caught the uh, interruption in the connection, and I kind of held off on talking. I want to make sure that you guys got all your questions answered about the troop bonus rewards. So if you have any more of those, please let me know.
Um, the other really cool event that we have is the Heroes in Action celebration. It's for any girl that sold 50 packages or more for uh, Operation Cookie. That event is May 7th at the Lucas County Fairgrounds in Maumee, Ohio. It's held um, up north just because that is where Heroes in Action is. That is where their uh, their out their uh, their base is up there. Um, so we hope to have some more details about these events out uh, here in the next week and a half. Um, those will probably go through some Cookie News emails that, that we send out on Mondays. So that is the end of our uh, webinar today, as well as our webinar series for the 2017 cookie program. Um, if you guys have to take off, I know it's getting close to 8 o'clock, we would really, really appreciate it if you would take a moment to fill out our survey. It's only a couple of questions. Um, it's super quick, and we definitely want your feedback. We want to know how the webinars were. Did we meet all of your expectations? What could we have done to, to meet your expectations? And is there information that we didn't cover that you would have liked to see um, for next time? So, um, And there's some open fields in there that you can type in any messages to us uh, with other questions. Um, I am going to hang out in the webinar for a little bit further, and we'll um, continue with our questions log. So if there's anything that you didn't get answered yet and you want to ask, we're here. Um, other important links, I'm going to copy and paste this in your chat feature as well. It is our direct link to our website for cookie resources. Um, it's gswo.org slash cookie resources. If you go to our webpage, the homepage, gswo.org, and you try to find the cookie page, it's like seven clicks in our website. So we created that nice vanity link. You can type it in, and it'll take you straight to the page. Um, the customer care email and phone number is on the front of your cookie book, but we've seen uh, amazing results with that customer care team so far. Um, they're really good at, at, at answering all your questions. We worked really hard to train them. Um, they should be able to answer about 98% of everything that you guys are going to ask. Um, there's the phone number and the email um, that you guys can use. And again, one more time, that survey link, we would really appreciate it if you guys took a couple of minutes to fill that out. Um, the first question, I think, is for internal use only. It asks for a code. You don't have to worry about that. You can skip it. Okay. So I will go ahead and stop our recording now, but uh, we will hang out on the line for just a little bit longer. Uh, I think we have about 15 minutes left, um, but we will uh, hang out and answer any questions that you have. Devin, are you still there? I think I see you still logged in. I just want to make sure that we're still good to go.